the yen set for a dramatic U-turn in 2023. Chinese hackers stole millions in U.S. COVID benefits. Ukraine war is set to slow during winter. A new blood test for cancer screening hits the market. Two crypto hedge funds come out of the market collapse unharmed. New Zealand will require Facebook and Google to pay for news. U.S. embassies face growing risks from climate change. Germany sets aside $10.5 billion to buy F-35s. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It's Tuesday, December 6th, and here are your top stories. Bloomberg cited market analysis as reporting the world's worst performing major currency looks poised for an impressive turnaround in 2023. According to Barclays and Nomura Holdings, the yen could rally more than 7% from current levels next year, while Vontable Asset Management said fair value is below $100 per dollar. State Street Global Market sees a quick snap back as fears of aggressive U.S. interest rate hikes recede, while T. Rowe Price said there is scope for gains on a more hawkish BOJ. This is just one of many unique anti-counterfeiting measures used in Japanese currency. Chief Investment Officer for Fixed Income at Franklin Templeton, Sonal Desai, said 10-year Japanese swap rates have climbed well beyond the BOJ 0.25% ceiling for the benchmark bond. That's a sign that traders are betting the central bank will tweak its policy of capping 10-year yields. The BOJ could ditch its control over benchmark bonds' yields over the next three to six months. And that's when the dollar completely moves lower and boosts yen gains. The yen could benefit as a U.S. recession will likely lead to safe haven demand. NBC News reported that according to the Secret Service, hackers linked to the Chinese government stole at least $20 million in U.S. COVID relief benefits, including small business administration loans and unemployment insurance funds in over a dozen states. U.S. law enforcement officials and cybersecurity experts said the theft of taxpayer funds by the Chengdu-based hacking group known as APT41 is the first instance of pandemic fraud tied to foreign state-sponsored cyber criminals. Cyber hacking, a major source of friction between the U.S. and China. And it's not often, if ever. That the media said it's unclear whether the Chinese government directed APT41 to loot U.S. taxpayer funds or simply looked the other way. According to multiple current and formal U.S. officials, the theft itself is a troubling development that raises the stakes of international cybersecurity. One senior Justice Department official said the hack has serious national security implications. The Secret Service said in a statement that it considers APT-41 a Chinese state-sponsored cyber threat group that is highly adept at conducting espionage missions and financial crimes for personal gain. U.S. Director of Intelligence Avril Hans said the fighting in Ukraine has been slowing down and this will likely continue to ease in the coming winter months. Both sides will try to refit, resupply and reconstitute for any counteroffensive in the spring. However, she admitted there has been no evidence of fading resistance on the part of Ukrainian forces. The war in Ukraine is now in its ninth month, but Russia has lost more than half the land it has seized. Direct hits broke up a platoon of Russians near Bakhmut, joint work of the 93rd Brigade. The BBC reported that Haynes told a defense forum in California that most of the fighting is currently around the Bakhmut and Donbass region of eastern Ukraine. She said following Russia's withdrawal of troops from the west of the Kherson region last month, fighting had slowed down. But she said, we actually have a fair amount of skepticism as to whether or not the Russians will be, in fact, prepared for any counter-offenses after the winter. She said, I think more optimistically for the Ukrainians in that time frame. Many cancers shed DNA into your bloodstream, known as cell-free DNA or circulating tumor DNA. This DNA is usually shed as cancer cells die. Using what's called next-generation DNA sequencing and machine learning, doctors are now able to use a single blood test to look at various patterns in that DNA code and figure out two things, if a cancer signal is present and from where the cancer likely started. This is gallery test and it may present a far more efficient way of detecting cancer. Cancer is a disease that affects millions of individuals around the world annually. Emeritus Chair of the Glickman Neurological and Kidney Institution, Eric Klein, explained that these patterns in your DNA are possible because of a biological process known as methylation. During this process, your body expresses certain genes but not others. You can picture it like a wall of light switches. For every switch you turn on, others may turn off, and different configuration produce different results. The methylation patterns are fingerprints that are characteristics of each kind of cancer. Currently. 
Hello, I'm Peggy. Thank you for joining us on Funday News. It is Monday, July 25th, and here are your top stories. Bloomberg reported that Australia is on high alert for food and mouth disease and its cattle herds after traces of food. 用心生活，享受自由，学习走自己的路。Funday. According to Bloomberg, while the cryptocurrency space is undergoing one of its roughest stretches in memory, with trouble brewing at exchanges and lenders and token prices collapsing, Pythagoras Investment Management LLC has two funds that have been rare bright spots in the market. Both its market neutral fund and its trend following Pythagoras Token Fund have each gained about 8% this year. Meanwhile, the world's largest digital token, Bitcoin, is down around 60% this year. CEO of Pythagoras, Mitchell Dong. Said its market-neutral fund utilizes arbitrage, meaning it is simultaneously buying the same crypto at different places and different prices, therefore buying low and selling high. Meanwhile, its trend-following fund uses technical indicators to detect short-term trends in the crypto market. Dong said the idea is to use quantitative technical indicators to try to detect trends, either up or down. The strategy doesn't look as attractive during bull market, but in a bear market, they can stand out. The New Zealand Minister of Broadcasting Willie Jackson said in a statement on Sunday that the country will introduce a law that will require big online digital companies such as Alphabet's Google and Meta platforms to pay New Zealand media companies for the local news content that appears on their feeds. Jackson said the legislation will be modeled on similar laws in Australia and Canada, and he hoped it would act as an incentive for the digital platforms to reach deals with local news outlets. Australia introduced a law in 2021 that gave the government power to make internet companies negotiate content supply deals with media outlets. A review released by the Australian government last week found it largely worked. Jackson said New Zealand news media, particularly small regional and community papers, are struggling to remain financially viable as more advertising moves online. It is critical that those benefiting from their news content actually pay for it. The U.S. investigators with the Government Accountability Office found that the State Department personnel working at embassies and consulates around the world face heightened safety and security risks from climate disasters, particularly in countries ravaged by storms, heat, and drought. The office found that the risk to diplomatic assets is rising at many of the State Department's nearly 300 posts in 180 countries. More than half of the highest-risk facilities are in East Asia and the Pacific. Routine visa services remain suspended at the U.S. Embassy in Manila, Philippines, such as interview appointments for B-1, B-2 business tourist visas remain suspended through the end of April. The U.S. Government Accountability Office is an independent agency that works for Congress. According to the report, the embassy facing the greatest climate risk is located in Manila, Philippines, where the State Department employs roughly 300 U.S. Foreign Service officers. At a sprawling compound on Manila Bay, the embassy has flooded twice over the last decade. In all, 32 embassies ranked in the highest category for climate disaster risk, from Apia, Samoa to Valletta, Malta. According to a government document seen by Bloomberg, Germany has earmarked 10 billion euros or 10.5 billion dollars to buy 35 F-35A Lightning the second fighter jets. The media said the money will come from a debt-financed 100 billion euro special fund that Scholz announced shortly after Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February. Deliveries under the plan are scheduled to take place between 2026 and 2029. The cost includes items such as air-to-ground missiles and ground infrastructure. The media reported Germany's failure to reach the 2% target agreed by the North Atlantic Treaty Organization has been a source of friction with the U.S. After Russia's attack, Scholz pledged to Parliament that Germany would invest more than 2% of gross domestic product annually in defense, aided by the special fund. Germany Defense Ministry Christine Lambrecht recently revised the target to 2% of the GDP and said Berlin would reach it on average in the next five years. Funding news will help you sharpen your English skills and keep you informed about international current events. If you want to know more about our other programs and keep learning about the world's most important topics in English, please click the link in the description below to join Funding for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I will see you next time.